what's up subscribers and to my viewers out there what's going on well before I get into this episode of lockout men makes the call I do have something serious to say all right now yesterday was a uh, was a horrible day or a couple of a couple of days ago was a horrible day for the people in Las Vegas um, some crazed psycho or whoever you want to call them uh, started shooting on a crowd of people uh, while they was at a concert so I wanted to touch on that yesterday but you know of course I was busy driving so I couldn't uh, pretty much couldn't get my thoughts together I actually was going to do a live feed on it also but unfortunately my connections for my live feed is all jacked up so but uh basically what I want to say is, is that you know I feel for the feel for the victims I pray for the survivors and uh hope that everything you know turn back you know turn back to good for them don't let fear or anything like that stop you from doing your everyday thing you know it's just unfortunate that they want to consider this as the worst mass shooting in history which history doesn't tell that much i mean there's been mass killings way before this guy even came into the picture so uh what i just want to say is, is that like i said my prayers is up to him uh Hopefully they'll get their lives back together. Hopefully the uh, survivors will get their lives back together. And like I said, don't don't let don't let fear or anything like that change the way you uh, you do your everyday thing. All right, well, let's uh let's get into the video. Go go go! Let's do this. What's good, everybody? What is good? All right, all right. Well, welcome back to another episode of Lockout Man Makes the Call. And as you saw in the first couple of frames there, I guess you already figured out who I'm gonna call next. Last week's episode was, uh, was a call made to uh, Dick Lady, Dick Lady Trucking and uh spoke to a young lady named shelly so thank you very much shelly for all the information that you've given uh to me and my subscribers out there i'm just trying to get information for you guys so that when you come in the truck and you pretty much figure out you know the type of information that you guys want out there so that's basically what i call myself trying to do let me make this disclaimer all right this is by no way, shape, or form uh, sponsored by any of them trucking companies that I'm making a call to. So nobody's paying me to do this stuff, all right? I'm just doing this because I feel that it's uh, great information, and, um, and if I can provide it for you, that's all, that's all great. This episode is about Maverick and how Maverick rose. A uh, little bit of detail about Maverick. Maverick is basically a flatbed division. They, they roll more flatbeds than they do anything else, but they do have other divisions there. They have a glass division, reefer division, a drive-in division. Now let me explain something, all right? I'm not familiar with flatbed, all right? And I, you know, if you if you're in if you want to come into trucking and want to do flatbed, all I mean, more power to you guys. See, to me, flatbed is a young man's game. See, I'm not young no more. You know what I'm saying? The back and the knees, I can't do it. But 
flatbed gang is a young man's gang. And if you can get in it right now and, you know, get it going on before you get up in age, do it. Very profitable, all right? Very, very profitable. Because not only that you get paid for your miles, but you get paid for tarping, untarping, and all that other good stuff out there. All right, so, Maverick. Let's give them a call and see what they're about. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing out there? All right. To my subscribers, thank you for joining me. To my viewers, thank you for joining me once again for Lockout Men Makes the Call. And this week's call is to Maverick. Yes, yes. I'm about to make that call. So, everybody, let's give a call to Maverick. Good morning. You say your name is uh, is Bailey? That is correct. B-A-I-L-Y. Oh. How can I help you? Oh, okay, okay. Hey, how you doing today, man? I'm interested in finding out some uh, information about uh, Maverick. Uh, I got some questions that i like to ask and see if you can uh, help me out. All right, so orientation. Um, is it paid for and how much is it paid? Um, well... I do need to make sure that you are, you know, a good candidate for us and within the hiring area. Okay. Well, within this, I need to be more specific with you. As far as, um, you said that you've never driven flatbed. So, do you have any over-the-road experience? Yes, I do. As long as I can verify two years, do you have any more over-the-road in the last five? Two years. Okay. As long as I can verify that, then any of your orientation and training will be a thousand dollars a week with us. Okay. How long is the orientation? Orientation is a week long, followed by for flatbed um, would be a week of hands-on training, and that's uh, learning the securements and how to tarp and so on and so forth. Okay. So for some odd reason that I'm not able to make it through there, will you guys be able to uh, get me back home? Well, of course. All right, all right. All right, so after after orientation, how long is the, um, like, let's say, for example, for a new out-of-school type person, how long is the uh, how long is the waiting period for a trainer, and how much experience do that trainer has? Well, it's really all dependent upon, you know, certain things. We don't bring someone in to be a trainer um, typically for less than a year. Um, they at least have to, you know, have over the road experience for at least a year. And typically, you know, only, you know, the, the better of our drivers would become um, a trainer to begin with. It's not something that's just optional for everybody or mandatory for anybody. Um, beyond that, um, your time wouldn't necessarily be declared um, as forced to go out with a trainer. You're welcome to do whatever time that you would like with a trainer just because you've never done flatbed. Um, but you wouldn't be necessarily forced to do so. I recommend it, but I'm not forcing you to, and nobody will. Okay. Um, so, because you do have over-the-road experience. But what's the training time and pay? So how long do I have to stay out, and how much would I get paid? Uh, well, training? depending upon the division that you're interested in, well, actually, no, there is no difference there. Um, all your time away from home, you'll get home every other week. Um, the only two divisions, divisions that I have available in your area is over the road that I get you home every other week. Um, now, any time that you're in training, uh, you'll come in, you'll do the week of orientation, that'll be $1,000. Then you'll do the week of hands-on training, that'll be $1,000. And then whatever time after that that you want to or elect to spend in a trainer truck, you'll get paid the $1,000 for that time as well. Um, now then, if you decide that you want to be in there for a week and you've got this figured out, you're good, that's fine. If you want to do it for two weeks, that's fine too. There is no minimum amount of time that you spend in a trainer truck. You can elect to do zero, um, but it's not going to be required of you. Um, but it's also nothing saying that you can't either. What's the uh, starting CPM? Um, depending upon your division here, and this is where we need to be a little more specific with you. Uh, you, you don't have to be specific. Okay. Just give me a general. Well, man, I can't do that because there's a difference between divisions here. Okay, so which one? So what's the starting pay for each division then? Okay, for my over-the-road flatbed, then the starting pay on that would be um, we would bring you in at uh, forty-nine cents. Now, for my glass division, there's a difference. Um, for my glass division, that would be fifty-three cents. Okay. That's 
sick. That is it. That's the two divisions that's available in your area. Uh, what's 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 the uh, what's the cent per mile for the uh, for the other division, the temp the the temp division? Temperature control is not available in your area. I I understand that. I'm just curious to know how much is the starting pay for that. It would be the same as the over the road flatbed. Oh, okay. All right. What's the average miles per week I can average? Um, in glass division, that's going to be between 2,000 and 2,400 is the typical average. Um, and then in flatbed, that's between 24 and 2,600. All right. Layover and detention pay? Uh, what's the... What's, what's we don't typically have any layover, but um, if there ever is any detention pay after the second hour, the second hour, the first two hours are free. And then after that, then it'll be $15 an hour up to 11 hours a day. Okay. You guys uh, offer medical, dental, vision, health? Of right? course. What about holidays and vacations? Um, you'll get vacation after your first year, um, and that just changed. Um, I believe you'll get uh, a week your first year, and then I believe after your third year, then you'll get two weeks, and after five years, Three weeks, I believe. Okay. What about uh, what about holiday pay? There is no holiday pay. All right. What's the sign-on bonus, and how much is it? Uh, the sign-on bonus that we have for experienced drivers is five thousand dollars, and it pays out over one hundred twenty days. All right. Over the road, you guys offer all forty-eight states, right? Is there any is there any dedicated or regional? Not in your area, no, sir. What's the pet and rider policy? Um, we have a no animal policy and a rider policy is 13 years of age or older. It's no cost to you and there is no wait time. The type of equipment that you guys uh, that you guys have there, is it automatics, 10 speeds, or both? It is all automatic, all Freightliner Cascadias. For driver comfort, what amenities do you guys offer in the trucks? Do you have? Well, in most of the trucks they all offer um, we have an optimized auto program, and that's where, you know, that way you can run your truck or you can run the air conditioning and the refrigerator in the truck. Um, most of them now do have refrigerators, and most of the newer trucks that are coming out are fitted with a TV bracket mount. Now, it doesn't come with a TV. That'll be up to you, but it comes with a bracket to mount on the wall. Okay, okay. You did mention that the truck do come with a, with a refrigerator. What about eight? Uh, Most sorry. of the trucks do, yes. Some of the trucks. What about uh, inverter, power inverters? They come with those too? Um, it depends. Um, most of the time, yes. Okay. Uh, is there. I mean, the reason that I'm only reluctant to say because they all have a type of inverter, yes. Some of them are a little bit different depending upon the needs of the truck. For example, if you have a CPAP machine, then you get a little bit different of a one. Because of the power that that two pet machine supplies to you all night. All right. Uh, is there any slip seating in the company? No, sir. All right. Uh, reimbursements. Do you guys reimburse for weight tickets? Uh, for any? Um, you never have to pay for a weight ticket. Um, we're set up a cat scale. Um, anywhere that's a cat scale. Um, but also, uh, we now use the app, so you can do a cat scale and never even get out of the truck. Okay. Felons, like, you know, let's say if I was a felon or something like that, how long would it, uh, what's the policies for, for felons? I would need to know the felon and how long ago it was. What's the trucks governed at? 65 miles an hour. Being that you guys is flatbed, how often do you guys rotate the, flat, the flatbed trailers? I'm, I'm not sure about that question. The trailers are always inspected and so long as they're in good condition, they'll continue to be on the highway. All right. Well, at Maverick, what's the driver turnover there? Um, I'm not 100% sure of that. I know industry-wide it's 109%. I believe they were somewhere around 80, I believe, is last, what I last heard about a year ago. Okay. Do you guys have teams? And if so, what's the team? No, sir. No teams? How many drivers, how many drivers are assigned to a fleet manager? Uh, that's dependent upon the division, um, the location, um, typically anywhere between 30 and 60. Keep rolling. 
Uh, do you guys stack uh, stack loads, or do you make do you? You're talking about pre plan? Yeah. Yes. So you guys stack them as as wild. Uh, typically one ahead. Uh, usually, whenever you're en route to deliver your load, mm. that's when they pot potentially do that. Uh, do you have an open door policy? I'm not sure what that is. All miles. Is all miles paid for and is it paid for by hub miles or zip to zip? Zip to zip and all miles are paid, all dispatch miles. What about empty? All dispatch miles. Including the empty? Yes, that is dispatch miles. Right. Well, let's say if I've been out of the game for a while um, and I decide to come back in, what's the what's the refresher force? I mean, refresher course if you guys have one. Okay, well, what we've been in reference to here is that you have two years experience in the last five. Is I'm, that I'm just, case? I'm just asking general. Like, do you guys offer a refresher course for a person that's been out of the game? No, sir. Oh, okay. Is all dispatch forced? Yes. Truck parking. Can I take the truck home with me? Yes. All right. After a year... How much is I'm? How much can I expect to make after a year with Maverick? Okay, the average experienced driver in Glass Division is between sixty-one and sixty-seven thousand. The average USA driver is between fifty-nine and sixty-five thousand. All right. Is there anything? Uh, is there anything that you can offer that I haven't touched on? No, sir. All right. So, Maverick, how how would I get in? How would I go by other than the other than the uh, 10th Street? What other ways I can come by to uh, put my application in with Maverick? It's all done online. And I can send you the link to the online application with your email address, and you can fill that out, and we can go over and get you into processing that way we can verify background, employment history, and so on. All right, so that's so if I want to go to the website, the website is? Uh, I'll send you the link to the application. All right. What's your email address? What's What's the website? I could probably get there quicker through the website. Okay, well, I still need to send you emails. So, what is your email address? Well, I already got you. I already got the email from when you guys sent it to me before. I just need to know the the website, like maverick.com. Okay, sir, we need to be able to work together here. If this isn't something that we can do, then this isn't going to be something we can proceed forward with. Okay, okay, why? Why, why come at me with a different attitude now? I'm, I'm just trying to get the website. That's all. Okay. Because I, I've asked you for some information and, and you're not being cooperative. I already told you that I got the information. Okay, in sir. I don't already. believe this is going to work out, but I do wish you the best of luck. Huh. So much for that. Well, hmm. I don't know what to say about that one, guys. Um, hmm. Well, Maverick. If you guys are interested in uh, Maverick, um, give them a call. Bailey was kind of... I don't know. I don't know what to say. But like I said, this, this is not sponsored. So this is just basically for me to get information. Um... Well, all right. Well, again, thank you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Lockout Men Makes the Call. Uh, if you guys want me to call anybody in particular, leave that in the comments below as well. You guys have a blessed day and stay peace out there, y'all. I'm out.